everybody. Welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily Straight. Something smells delicious, and mm. I'm very happy about this. I know. It's two-cycle oil from the chainsaw. I was thinking more like meat, like something like nice and hearty fall kind of. Pork with cider? Why, yes, that would be tasty. <laughs> Go! Hi, everybody. Welcome to Todd's Test Kitchen. I'm a cook. I cook for my family and friends. Today, as always, I want to cook something a little different. I have a Boston butt. Actually, it's true, because I'm from Boston, and I have a butt. But we're talking about a pork shoulder. We're talking about a picnic roast. We're talking about a Boston butt. It's all the same thing. And I am so tempted. There's every strand in my soul that wants to make a carnita out of this, but I'm not going to. I saw a new recipe that I give it a try. Pork and apple. There is. I grew up having pork chops and applesauce on the same plate. Did you do this? Maybe it's just me. Um, and I thought, it's fall. The leaves are changing here in Utah. Why not try it? So that's what we're going to do today. Now, um, it all starts off um, with my butt. This is what you're going to need. You need pepper, salt, apples that don't break down when they're cooked. We've got Dijon mustard. We've got some vegetable broth. We've got scallions. We've got bacon. We've got cider. We've got butter. One thing I want you to remember today is that I am making two of these. Now, some of the quantities you see me putting in uh, are going to be twice the, the amount because last time I made, <laughs> um, what did I make? A beef, beef shank, right? Uh, I got like this much of it. The next day I got there and I thought leftovers. There were no leftovers. There were round bones and that was it. So I'm making two of them. So one's going to have to go on top of the stove. And one's going to go in the oven. We're going to cook at 325. What I've always decided to do, what I always do, is I braise. And I always braise in a Dutch oven. Now the reason I do this is because the heat is all the way around it. Because it all conducts the heat. And the other one is going to go in too. So... I am doing two of these, all right? So, and if you want a recipe on this, if you go online and say pork and apple, hundreds of them show up, some with cinnamon, others with, anyway. The point being is I kind of generalize about what, how much I'm putting in and kind of, eh, so I don't have a specific recipe. But first thing we want to do, see what I did there? But, um, is we want to cut uh, this into six, uh, six pieces because we're going to brown it. We're going to brown it, uh, which is going to be great. And why do you brown beef? I, I learned that I don't know everything. I don't know a lot. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Um, bread is good. Toasted is, toast is better. That's why we brown the meat. But first of all, we have to cook the bacon. kind of sexy isn't it all right so this would be about four ounces remember i'm making two of these oh wait even sexier all right this is the part where you uh, uh destroy your your kitchen uh, basically like we said you're going to take the meat and you're going to put it into the bacon fat along with one tablespoon of butter and you're gonna go ahead and brown every side of it every side of it like I said bread's nice toasted bread is better more flavor um, and there's smoke and you can't do it all at once so you're gonna brown 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 and put it in the next batch goes in uh, and so that goes on until everything is browned off and then you put it aside All right, so I have now put the meat back in the pot one layer, leave some space in between them so they don't poach, and then in one hour we're going to flip them over and add the bacon back. All right, two hours is up. Let's go check and see what we have. Oh, I think that'll work, don't you? The only thing left is the apples and a tiny bit of mustard. Let's get, let's get to the apples. You know, there's always a time like this that 
you kind of wish that you had uh, your mom or your grandma around, right? Because there was always someone, it might have been an aunt or something like that, but there was always a person in your crew who could peel an apple. And they would peel it like they would never take any of the flesh of the apple. And they'd feed it to us as they did it for pies and all that stuff. But doing this always makes me think of them. And they had those old fashioned retro aprons on, which aren't retro when they were wearing them, I guess. But there is always something about peeling an apple that just makes me think about them. All right, All right I've got six more to do. Now that you've destroyed your entire kitchen and your stove is covered with oil, uh, it is now time for the next step. And the next step is, my friends, is to add the shallots. By the way, cutting these is like worse than onions. So we're going to put these in now. Put them in now. We've lowered the heat. We're going to soften those. Next thing we're going to add is the apple cider. The apple cider, after those soften up, we've got two tablespoons of of uh, apple, cid uh, apple cider vinegar as well. And <clears throat> this will go in as soon as the shallots are softened. <coughs> All right, two hours is up. Let's go check and see what we have. Oh, I think that'll work, don't you? The only thing left is the apples and a tiny bit of mustard. Let's get, let's get to the apples. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take out the pieces and put them in a deep kind of dish because there's other stuff that's gonna go in here. All right, and we're going to get the other pieces out. There we go. Now I'm going to put the rest of it in and skim afterwards. So I'm going to take the rest of the bacon that we cooked early. That's going to go in. Also, going into the pot, and you kind of make think that someone made this up, but... And we're going to do a little Dijon mustard, just a little bit like that. And then the apples. Now remember, I'm making two batches, so I'm only going to put half in. And that's probably too many, but I'm really excited about the whole apple thing. So we're going to let that go. And we're going to turn the heat back up on this, and we're going to let it cook down for a little bit. All right, just remember, it's all an experiment. There it is, mashed potatoes, little chive on top. There are the apples, and there is the apple pork. All right, well, go ahead and try this out on your own. It's always an adventure, and I'll see you next time in Todd's Test Kitchen. Can I eat it now? The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. Why are you here? Why aren't you voting? Oh, you already did. Oh, sorry. Because you're so responsible. Thank you. Thank if you it, very much. If you haven't, in about four minutes, we're going to irritate the people who haven't and make them go. And for the rest of you that have, you can feel undeniably smug. Sit back and put your feet up and mock them openly. But no, what I have done... No, support. I have solved the problem, and I want to share this with you. Okay. Uh, people of Utah, um, I went online, 
And I don't know. And you got a box. Oh, That's don't tell so them. Exciting. The secret came with a receipt and everything. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, because this is optional equipment in uh, Utah when you're driving, uh -huh. uh, I got myself a signal for left and right turns. What, seriously? Now, now, I know that your car doesn't have one because obviously you haven't been using it in front of me. Mm. And I just want to kind of go over some of the basics. Uh, this is going to go in my truck. Now watch this. Careful. Slow down. Okay. So stay with me. If you, if you need to stop this and look at it slower, feel free. Okay, I have no so, idea what the hell you're doing here. So here is my signal control for my 2011 F-250 truck, okay? All right. All right, when I go like this, my left blinker goes on. Now, the left blinker is designed to let people in back of you know that you're going to be turning left. Now, when I turn it this way, I know this is hard to believe. The right hand side is gonna blink. And that lets people know, guess, that's right. Is this a scathing indictment on the inability of Utah drivers to signal when they're about to turn? That I am turning right, exactly. And so. You really thought you needed to purchase an actual turn signal utility handle, whatever that is, in order to display this important information? Who's the one who's bitches about driving more than I? You. How much? Is that three forty-five? Twenty-four dollars plus shipping. Twenty-four dollars, two-day delivery for a visual aid. You can actually put that in the truck because don't you already have one in the truck? Unfortunately, my intermittent windshield wiper doesn't work. Oh. That's right. So out of nowhere, I'll be driving along on a dry day, and all of a sudden, <laughs> and scare that. And it's very, very loud. In crap your out of me on a dry day and with a dry windshield, and it will do that every I don't know ninety seconds or so until something makes the car go. I don't have to do that anymore. Well, this is what's going to solve it. But the point is, is that if you don't use your turn signals. And you're not wearing your psychic pants that day, you may not know they're turning. Now, I'm not sure why I'm driving, driving an F-250 truck, because it's too big. But I'll run you over <laughs> if you do not give me fair warning. And it's not something I want to do out of anger. And you'll feel super bad about it. I it's will feel like bad. It'll be an accident. I will not want to do this. But unless you click, click, click. So I want to say 24 bucks, save your life. Start using them. Uh, voting. Wow. Why are you still that here? That was a long walk. Have you... But an important safety feature. <laughs> I have never heard any more, anybody ever complain Don't more uh... about traffic than you. Alrighty, voting. We mailed in our ballots. We walked them up to the mailbox. We, we put them in and made sure they would be indeed postmarked. I yelled inside the box. By the 5th, the which box. unfortunately is yesterday. I yelled inside the box. Now here's the deal. You may be thinking, okay, crap, I, I should vote. You're right. I am not registered. I am so screwed. This is not true. Now, if you go to elections.utah.gov, you will find out that you can indeed vote on election day, which can is you? today. Okay, you can. I didn't you know You need that. to do it at one of your polling places. If you once again go to elections.utah.gov, you can find out the polling location. Slow down. You're talking that really is closest fast. to you. We will so, also put this down on so you can see it in text underneath you, the video. You look at it under your zip code, and it tells you uh -huh. where to go. Or you can also go to your county clerk's office, one or the other. Now, here's the nice thing. Just bring in your valid ID and the proof of residence, like a, a like a utility bill that would have your hilarious. address on it. Your water right? bill is like, oh, well, there you go. It's a water bill that tells us everything <laughs> you, we need to know. You must live in Utah. No, it could be an Xfinity bill. You, they just need could to be. know the address Anything. in their district. Yeah. That's the only deal. Right. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll get the phone. You talk to them some more.
All right, I'll do that, okay. babe, because that's super subtle. So, and by the way, and if you've also changed addresses, you need to have something that proves your address because otherwise your vote will not be valid if it is the correct and current address. So, once again, uh, just if you've moved, it's okay. You can still go in and get it cleared up. If you are not registered, you can still go in and clear it up. And if you need more information about, like, the various resolutions or, or things that are happening, the propositions, it's very, very simple. All you have to do, once again, is go to elections.utah.gov. And it will tell you everything you need to know. You can do some research, study up a little bit. Man, I, I, and I'm not the people who, who say, it doesn't matter who you vote for, just vote. I'm the person who says, what are you doing? I need the smart part to this. <laughs> Trust me. No, this is worth it. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me, hon. <sighs> Don't abandon me. Here we go. Go ahead. Go ahead. The important thing is this, though, this is that and I'm not going to be the one that says, I don't care if you, who, if you even know anything, just vote. No, please go educate yourself. Yeah. This is too important for any mm -hmm. of us to be just doing this like, oh, single party ballots. I want you to look at it and see mm -hmm. and think about it. And here's one thing that really pushed with me. In the last election, the millennials were the ones who voted the least. Now, this is not an indictment, but I'm saying this is your future now. What's up, see, dudes? You see what's happening. And believe me, people are making decisions now for your future and your retirement and all the other things that may or may not be available to you unless you make notice now that you're interested. Because okay. if you start paying attention, they have to pay attention to you. So not only go vote, but grab three of your friends, throw them in your cool little car, take an Uber. I don't care what you do. Just please, please vote intelligently today. Make, make, Research it. Make fun of me for my phone going off. I dare you. That was super classy. I dare you. Go Would ahead. you like to tell me something Say good? something about it. Just say, hey, your phone went off or whatever. There's a seven ribbed roast in the oven cooking as we speak. I'll talk faster. Tell me something good. Are we ready? Okay, it's brought to you by PC Laptops, PC Laptops. Of course, you can start with an amazing desktop or laptop starting at $7.99 with lifetime parts and labor. Now, this is really cool. I'm madly in love with independent bookstores. I always have been. King's English here in Salt Lake City is one of my favorite. Right. There's a seven rib roast in the oven, pal. Slow down. You're killing so I love me. them. I mean, you go in there and you get to look at books that open them up. And I know most of our reading's done online now, but there's right. nothing like opening a book for the first time. I saw one the other day in the other room, and I was like, "Wow, look at you touching paper." Mm -hmm. Very exciting. When, October, you, when do you return that to the museum? October Books in Southampton's been struggling to find an affordable rent since the prices started rising in Southampton. Okay. Now, they've been there since 1977. All right. And independent bookstores have to be tenacious. They're like barnacles, man. They, oh. they find their rock and they stick to it and they oh. try to really encourage the community. And a lot of times authors are more inclined to go there even though it's a smaller turnout because they're like, I want to support this. Oh, for book uh, signings. Yeah, a lot of really well-known authors have been known to do that. Okay. Um, so they even started a crowdfunding page in hopes of maybe we could buy down by an old bank building down the block, and, and that could really work, and that could be cool. They actually met the crowdfunding goal. They actually could buy the building, 400000 But the cool thing about it One is, bookstore got $400,000. This is how much people believed in them. It was incredible, but here was the other thing. They had put in everything, all their personal savings, everything right, that right, had been right, donated, right, all the right, things. Right. And they were down to the point where like, we can't afford to hire a moving company. And you think about the inventory in an, in an independent bookstore, the thousands upon thousands of books. And so they, there's their goal, this building right in front of them. And they'll be fixing it up little by little as they go, but they can't afford it. I can already, I know where you're going. To have a mover. And the thing is, is that they're really short on time. So they actually put out a call on social media calling for, for volunteers. Could it's you like, please be a human conveyor belt? Could you help us? Because the this new is building, like Dunkirk, you know, exactly, during World War II, exactly, right? Exactly, because the new building's only... 500 feet down the street. Are you shh? So they were hoping, okay, well, you know, if a couple dozen people show up, that'll be great, and we can so, really work this. So we're just going to do this. This is what we're doing, right? 800 people. And you take people, this, and you pass it to the next. 800 people showed up and lined every inch of the sidewalk there, and they passed each one of the store's 10,000 books to their new home. One of the employees, Amy Brown, said, I was wow. really stunned. She said, I was texting my friends on my phone hoping a couple people would show. And she said, it wasn't until I actually went out and saw the line of people down the road that I truly got the understanding of what they were doing. Now, the cool part is when passing pedestrians were going by, saying, what are you, what are you doing? And they explained it. They're like, I can totally stand here and help you. So they so put down their backpack. Shoulder or, to shoulder. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Restaurants even brought hot tea and coffee for the volunteers to oh keep gosh. them there. And they all stood there in this wonderful human conveyor belt for 12 hours. 
to get everything put back into the new store. Nicely done. I love that. Congratulations, October Books, on your new home. Very nice. Another reminder about your turn signals. Um, I'm going to tell you now a story about a man who's been arrested unjustly. I don't think this is a fair thing at there all. There should have been a video on this. I wish that we should crowdsource a little something for this man's bail. Because because this is hilarious. We have been to a certain store. Uh, I have been there. Erin uh, is in wonder when she goes there. Um, in, the, in the past six months, in putting our stuff together for the studio and such, mm -hmm. I have, we have, together... Yeah. Um, testing our merit, marital skills, wow. trying to put yeah. together certain items from Ikea. And it wasn't even the putting together, it was the thousands of choices available to us. I think we did really good on the assembly. It was the decision-making process that almost killed us. We went twice, and we were smart enough because we've been married long enough just to go, we need to leave now. We're not ready for this step. We're, we're, this isn't going well. And so we left. <laughs> And then we went online a little bit more. And then we came back and we were like calmer, right? It was much better. We could handle it. First of it. all. There's just so wh many why, choices. Why do shopping carts move sideways? That's ridiculous. For downtown streets, a lot of these stores are located in major metropolitan areas. I'm in a store, okay? So the big point about Ikea for a lot of people is how the hell do I get out? Well, I have money. I want to give it to you. I want this 4,000-pound bookshelf in the Here's back of my, my car. car. Here, I'm just going to throw money at you like you're a stripper. I'm just going <laughs> like, to... I just want to go home. And, and so the point being is that some guy went to Ikea, and what he did is he made up these big arrows... Like the normal kind you might see in a regular mall, perhaps. Big yellow ones that are about, what, three feet long? Three feet long, and they glowed in the dark. And he, what he did was he went around, and when he found where there was a dead end, and, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a way to get out, he put an arrow going back in. So essentially he created this... Death zone. Unescapable labyrinth of Ikea. And he did this where all just over the store where you're like, <coughs> they have arrows. We're going, okay, we're going to exit. No, he loops you back through the death zone. Now, ordinarily, I might be a little irritable about this, especially if I'm one of the shoppers, but just the time this man took no. to examine all the circumferences and navigation and to it's put it all brilliant. together, that is so freaking cool. Like you and don't have, arrested. Like you don't have phones to call 911. And how many phone calls have they gotten from Ikea? Thousands. I would believe that. All right. We're going to leave you today with, do try the pork recipe because it's really good. Please, please vote. Please do vote. Do not let this opportunity. Open until what? 8 o'clock tonight? Yes. The, I think. Do not let this opportunity pass you by. Please don't. Perhaps think about using your turn signal. I bought a new one. They're not optional equipment. They come with your car. There's many important lessons we've all learned there today. You, go. you guys have a great day tomorrow. We're going to see you again on the Todd and Aaron Daily stream. Go vote. We said vote, right? We said vote. Please and you know what vote, vote backwards means? You, uh, Nothing. No. <laughs> just, just, just vote backwards. Please, please vote. Okay.